There is something magical about the moment when two pieces of metal become one. At the center of this magical moment, a special substance is used. This substance has been important to metalworking since ancient time, playing a key role in shaping and creating metal objects, and it's called flux. I remember my first time using flux. I was forging my first axe, nervously sprinkling borax onto the hot metal. I don't think I knew why, probably just used it because I had seen others do it and heard it was necessary. That journey from blind application to deep understanding is what I want to share with you today. But before we dive into the rich history of flux, let me explain exactly what flux does in simple terms. Imagine cutting an apple and watching it turn brown. That is oxidation. That is the same thing that happens to hot metal in your forge, but much faster. Flux acts like a sunscreen for your metal creating a protective shield that prevents this reaction that happens when oxygen gets in touch with the hot metal surface. Flux keeps the metal clean, something that is necessary when soldering and welding. For those just starting out, let's cover the essentials. You don't need anything fancy. Regular borax from your local hardware store will work perfectly fine. Key is knowing when and how to apply it. So you wait until your metal reaches an orange color. Then sprinkle a thin layer across the surface. You know you have used enough when you see it melt and flow evenly across the surface. And the flux will make a glass-like coating. When it comes to safety, always wear your safety glasses and a proper respirator is a good idea. While borax isn't highly toxic, you don't want to breathe in any dust. And if any flux gets on your skin, just wash it off with cool water. Now, let's step back in time. Imagine yourself in ancient Egypt 4000 years ago. A craftsman is carefully working with a theoretic iron nickel using primitive flux materials like sodium carbonate and pot ash. These early innovations didn't have our modern understanding of chemistry, but they knew something fundamental. Certain materials could make metals join together in ways they never could alone. From those early Egyptian workshops to the sophisticated techniques of Viking blacksmiths, flux has been more than just a technical tool, it's been a catalyst for human progress. Sumerians used it to create intricate jewelry that still amazes us today. Romans employed it to forge the weapons and armor that build an empire. The story of flux is deeply intertwined with human cleverness. As we journey through time, we find that each civilization discovered and mastered their own flux materials. Sumerians found that crushed limestone could help them create cleaner, stronger welds. When combined with the intense heat of their forge, this simple material enabled them to create the beautiful gold and silver jewelry that we still marveled at today. In the heart of ancient Rome, metal workers used something fascinated, crushed oyster shells. These shells, rich in calcium carbonate, serve the same purpose as modern limestone flux. When Roman smiths needed to forge their legendary armor and weapons, they would often combine these shells with fine sand. This mix could handle the intense heat of their forge. The Vikings, those master metal workers, also made their discoveries. They found that fine white silica sand, often gathered from specific beaches, made an excellent flux for their pattern welded blades. The same sand, when properly used, helped them to create the legendary Norse weapons. What is truly fascinating is how these ancient materials connect what we use today. Flux used in ancient Egypt, for instance. It is chemically similar to the borax many of us use in our modern forges, and the limestone flux of the Sumerians. We still use calcium-based fluxes in modern steelmaking. In ancient China, metal workers developed perhaps the most sophisticated early understanding of flux. They discovered that by combining specific types of clay with other minerals, they could create a flux coating that would protect their steel during the forging process. But what's truly remarkable about these ancient fluxes, many of them are still very effective today. 
When we look at the properties of these ancient fluxes, we find that all share key characteristics. They all help prevent oxidation by creating a protective barrier between the hot metal and the air. And they help clean the metal surface for better bonds. They can withstand the high temperature needed for forging. Understanding these ancient materials gives us deeper insight into our modern techniques. Each time we use flux in our forge, we are not just following a formula. We are participating in a tradition of discovery and innovation that spans thousands of years. Let me share a revelation I had while making a draw knife. I was facing a challenge. I had a 12 cm piece of carbon steel that needed forge welding, but my forge could only heat 7 cm to the right temperature at once. Flux allowed me to do the weld in sections, and problem solved. Here are some common mistakes that I made and how you can avoid them when forge welding. Using too much flux. It is just a waste of material and can actually prevent a good weld. Applying flux too early. Wait for that bright orange color, otherwise the flux might not stick. Not getting the metal hot enough. Maybe not a problem when forge welding, but if you use it to clean the surface. If the flux isn't melting and flowing, your metal simply isn't hot enough. And don't rush the process. Take your time, especially when starting out. When flux is working properly, you will see the flux melting smoothly across the surface and create a clean glass-like coating. There shouldn't be any black or crusty areas. Metal surface should look bright and clean when heated. Today we have many types of flux at our disposal. From traditional borax that I still use in my forge to sophisticated synthetic compounds. Each has its place and purpose. I've also learned that flux is great to use when you just want to clean the surface from forge scale. And in silversmithing, it can be used as a heat shield, protecting more delicate areas while working on others. Every time you use flux in your forge, you are not just practicing a technique. You are participating in a tradition that stretches back thousands of years. From those first Egyptian metalworkers to the Viking blacksmiths to us today, preserving and advancing these techniques. Understanding flux will give you confidence in your craftsmanship. Start with the basics we covered today. Proper safety, correct temperature, light application and patient observation. With practice, you will develop an intuition of how to use it. Remember, everyone starts as a beginner. Take your time, practice these fundamentals, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. They are your best teacher in the forge. Thank you for joining. Until next time, keep your forge hot and use flux dry.